All right, folks. So let's say that we have a population of seven, All right? N equals seven. And whatever that quality is, it can be a lot of things. It can be a measure of attitude. It can be a measure of personality. It can be a physical quality about a person. It can be an, a quality about an animal. This could be the weights of seven different uh, animals of the same species, okay? So, but it doesn't matter what it is. We just know that we have these seven values. It's a population of seven. And the values are five, six, four, six, seven, nine, and seven. Now these two sevens, even though they're the same value, they're different units in the population. And these two sixes, even though they're the same value, they're different uh, units in the population. Imagine having a population of dogs and one of the dogs uh, weighs 13 pounds and another one of the dogs weighs 13 pounds. It's okay for two units, two different units in a population to have the same measure on the same quality. That's what's going on here. But the population overall, there are seven of them in the population. We are going to take a sample size. We're going to take, take a sample size of five. And here's what I'd like to know. How many possible samples could we have if the population is seven and the sample size is five? Well, we can use our NCR calculation. It's going to be seven NCR five. You can do that in a calculator if you want to real quick. But I happen to know that if you do it in the calculator, the answer is going to be 21. Okay, so there are 21 possible samples that we could take with a sample size of five out of a population of seven. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to project up onto this board all 21 of those possibilities. Okay. All right, so hopefully you can see this okay. Now, you can see here, this is the, this is the, the uh, sample number. So one through 21 here. One of the samples is a five, a six, a four, another six, and a seven. Another sample is a five, a six, a four, a six, and a nine. Then a five, a six, a four, a seven, and a nine. Then a five, a six, a six, a seven, and a nine. So there's 21 unique possibilities for to have a sample of, uh, out, of, out of the seven numbers, okay? Now here's where we're gonna start trying to understand uh, what we're gonna do here with statistics is each one of these samples, each one of these samples, all 21 of them, each one of them has a sample mean. And what I'd like you to do is, I would like you to pause this video and see if you can calculate the sample mean for all 21 of these samples. And I'm gonna do that right now also. Okay, you can see what I've done here. I've gone through and I have calculated the average of all 21 of these samples, the sample mean of each sample, okay? And so all I did, it's a mean, so we just add up five numbers, divide by five. And if I add up those numbers and divide by five, I get 5.6 for this one. The sample mean of this one is six, then 6.2, 6.6, 6.2, 6.4, 5.6, and so on, okay? 21 different means for 21 different samples. Okay, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use these 21 sample means to try and understand uh, something that's called the sampling distribution of the mean. Okay, so we've got a population of seven. We have the sample size is five, and given that those circumstances, there's 21 possible samples. Now, these are the means of those 21 possible samples. So here's what I want to tell you. Here's what we're going to try and understand. That these 21 numbers represent the population, the population of the sample means. This is all of them, right? It's all of the sample means. It's all of the possible samples. Therefore, it's a population. And being a population, what's it a population of? It's a population of sample means. Every one of these is a sample mean. 
And that is a quality of a group of numbers. Being a quality, it qualifies for data analysis. Okay, so here's the interesting thing. Because this is now a population, it has its own mean. It has its own average, no, average value. We could add up all 21 of these numbers, divide by 21, and that would give us a population mean. It would be the mean of the population of possible samples. And so what we call that is mu sub x bar, which is also called the expected value of m, the expected value of the mean. It is the mean of all the means. It is the average, uh, it's the average average. It's the average mean value, okay? Here's what I want you to do. Pause the video, add up these 21 numbers, divide by 21, and identify the uh, expected value of m, the mean of the mean, the population mean of the sample means. Okay, did you do it? All right, I got 6.2857. Now, here's what I want you to do. You ready for this? This is awesome. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go back to our seven original numbers here. These see these seven numbers? And I want you to add those seven numbers up and divide by seven. And what you would be identifying is the population mean. So I want to know over here, what is the population mean of these seven numbers? Go ahead and try that now. Isn't that awesome? What did you get? I know what you got. If you did it right, you got the same number right here. You got 6.2857. 6.2857. And here's the lesson. Here's your first lesson. Is that the mean of a population of a, of a particular quality, whatever that is, the mean of the population is always equal to the population mean of all of the possible samples. That's important to understand. It's important to understand because usually we have way too many possible samples to actually be able to identify the mean of the population or of the, the sample means. So if somehow or another you can get a good approximation of the population mean, then you can use that instead. And oftentimes what we typically do is we actually come up with a sample mean and use it as a surrogate measure for the population mean. But it's still, it's, it's doable depending on how you gather the data and how you use it, okay? And I know it sounds like hocus pocus. It sounds like uh, some kind of weird hokum, some kind of magic trick. And it really kind of is a magic trick. But here's the really funny thing is, even though it is kind of a magic trick, there's a lot of consistency and validity to these techniques. Now remember, right now you are only at an introductory level of statistics. It would take you probably at least a few years of really studying and digging into statistics to have a good, strong understanding of these techniques. And you're only at the beginning right now. So don't try to understand the whole thing. Just take it one piece at a time. But here, this is an important discovery is that the population mean is always going to be equal to the, the population mean of all the sample means. Okay? That's important. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to take these 21 numbers right here. I want you to take all these means and then either use Excel or something like that. And what I want you to identify is I want you to identify the standard deviation of these numbers. Now, if you use the data analysis pack, if you use the sample statistics, it's actually going to give you the sample standard deviation of these numbers. But if you know how to use Excel or some other program to find the population standard deviation of these numbers, that's really what we want is the population standard deviation. Why don't you go ahead and try that now? Okay, if you did that correctly, then what you came up with as the standard deviation, so the population standard deviation of all the means should have come up as about 0.39. Now, if you did the sample standard deviation, 
then you would have come up with 0.38. But because this is a population of all of the sample means, all the possible sample means, it should be the population standard deviation, which is 0.39. Now, these two are both really close to each other, so that's acceptable. We just calculated from all 21 of those sample means, we calculated that the standard deviation the standard deviation of all 21 of those sample means is 0.39. Well, what I forgot to tell you is that we have a special name for this standard deviation. So, the standard deviation, the population standard deviation, let's just say, let's just say sigma. Okay, the population standard deviation of the sample means Is called, is called the standard error. This is called the standard error, okay? And so this standard error, we're going to use it the same way that we have used a standard deviation. It's going to help us to draw conclusions and use a z-score. So from now on, instead of, instead of saying standard deviation of the, uh, of the sample means, we're just going to say standard error. So every time we say standard error, what we mean is the standard deviation of all of the possible sample means. Okay, but let's, we're going to stick with 0.39 and we're actually going to say that it's approximately equal to 0.4. We're also going to say that this 6.2857 is approximately equal to 6.3. So we're going to use 6.3 as the mean and 0.4 as the standard deviation. So here we are. We have a mean and we have a standard deviation. And you know what we can do with a mean and a standard deviation is we can create a normal distribution curve. So let's go ahead and do that right over here. We're going to put our, draw our bell curve. We're going to draw a line. We're going to put a hash in the middle and then a few hash marks over here and then a few hash marks over here. Our mean is 6.3. That is the average mean. It's the mean of all the means, okay? It's mu sub x bar, the expected value of m, all right? And then our standard deviation is 0.4. So we're going to go up by 0.4s, 6.3, then 6.7, then 7.1, then 7.5. Then we're going to go down by 0.4s. We're going to do 5.9 and 5.5 and 5.1. Okay, now let me explain what we just created. This is a frequency distribution of sample means. And what we call that, this has a special name. This is called a sampling, a sampling distribution of the mean of the mean. And we are going to use this a lot. This is a very important frequency distribution. This frequency distribution, the sampling distribution of the mean, allows you to be able to draw conclusions about whether a particular sample mean is like this population of means or unlike this population of means but we'll get into that in another video. For now, I'm done with this one. What we're going to do in the next video is I'm just briefly going to discuss something called the central limit theorem, and then lastly, we're going to uh, try and work out some actual problems, okay?